Another edition. Stop. Another winning edition of Picks and Roll for you right here on a Thirsty Thursday. I am Sean Brace. Got it right this time. Joined as always by Sixers Insider. All things NBA for us on The Gambler. Mr. Sean Bernard. Sean underscore Bernard. One. The number one is where you can find him. A lot to get to. We got seven games in the association. All things NBA coming your way, including hashtag this league. Can't get like can't get away from that, man. Off season, in season, hashtag this league. Sean, good afternoon. How are we doing today, sir? Yeah, can't complain. There's always something new in the association, whether it's Giannis throwing a tantrum <laughs> after dropping 64, Draymond kicking people, tossing people. It's something every single day. So the league keeps us entertained. Best reality television show in the entire world. Well said. And I just want to put this out there. I almost bit on a fake Draymond Green Twitter <laughs> handle. <laughs> Where he was like, yo, LeBron, I need those front row seats. I got time to win. And I was about to go nuclear. Like, you think this guy's going to learn? You think this guy cares? And I'm like, wait a minute. And they almost <laughs> got me, man. And I just said, hold up. Um, you know, look, ultimately, let's just start there. Because we were very passionate about our takes. You were spot on with with your thought, with uh, what you said. Your, your, your phrase was, I believe, um, the NBA has a Draymond Green problem. Couldn't agree with you more. Like, enough is enough, man. Like he he just choked out Rudy Gobert for no reason, got five games that didn't register. Everybody's laughing. TNT, they're all having fun with it. I'll, I'll put you in a headlock. Like it's not a joke. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. And I'm not fearful, but I could see that something would escalate further if the NBA did not act the right way here. And they did. Um, indefinitely is the word. And mm-hmm. I thought that Adrian Wojnarowski last night on ESPN nailed it. They don't want to put a timetable on this, which is good. I don't know how you're going to determine whether or not Draymond Green has learned his lesson, but, you know, with the whole hours and this and this and that and that, uh, they laid out a few things that he had, to, you know, those boxes he had to check. But I'm okay with the thought of, I'm not going to give you a timetable if I'm Commissioner Silver. I like that because you know where I stood. I give him off to the All-Star break, which is 20-plus games. That's going to be a huge deal for the Golden State Warriors. Should send shockwaves through that franchise, especially for his teammates. They continue to lose. They're like 10-13 this season. They're five-and-a-half-point dogs versus the Clippers tonight. Um, So indefinitely is the word. Your take on the uh, suspension handed down to Draymond Green, Sean. Yeah, happy to see the NBA stepping down, seemingly coming with like a strong hand on this one. I hesitate to fully like praise the NBA on this for starters because I think they've allowed the Draymond stuff to to go on long enough, and there's been enough looking the other way. I talked about Steve Kerr, my issue with him, and kind of his lack of addressing things yesterday. Still stand by all that and feel like he should have a stronger voice in all this. And also, like the indefinitely sounds great. But let's see how exactly that plays out. What is the indefinite sentence here? Is this something that after a couple games, they decide, you know what, that's good enough and toss him back out there? Or is this a long term? Let's see how he gets back on the floor. And I'm curious what the answers to all that are. I know they talk about a counseling program and him having to meet some standards and other things before he can get cleared to play. It's a lot. I'm glad that they at least laid something down and put a, I guess, like, a punishment in place but to me i still have a bunch of questions on how the actual functionality and the the logistics of how this plays out the bottom line is it is the right thing to suspend him it's gone on for too long and i think the that draymond needed this as a slap in the face i don't think it's going to change anything but at least that there is some uh i guess punishment for his actions can nobody whoop his ass in the league like is he the toughest guy in the league can somebody just because that's how you're really going to get people to shut up you know I just saw something on, on Instagram where Stephen A, I don't know, again, who knows, maybe I'm biting on something that's fake, but Stephen A yelling at Travis Kelsey, you know where I'm at. I just wish somebody would roll in and kick Stephen A's ass. Like, eventually someone's going to call your bluff and say, okay, I do know you're at, I'll show up, let's go. And yeah. you think you're tough enough, let's go. Like, I, I hate to go down that path, but like that's the only way I see Draymond Green learning is if someone knocks him upside the head and KOs him, and he's like, what just happened? And he's embarrassed. He's shook. And Stephen A continues to run. Like, who are you to say anything to Travis Kelsey, bro? Like, he bench, yeah. bench press you. Come on, man. I don't know. Draymond Green, is he the toughest dude in the league? I can't imagine that to truly be the case. The, the Trump card used to always be James Johnson with the Miami Heat, who was a black belt in jiu-jitsu, <laughs> a guy who had a ton of street cred on top of that and some UFC fighting experience, all these things. That used to be always the guy that I was like, all right, that's the toughest dude in the NBA, regardless yeah. if he's not getting major minutes. I don't know who the guy truly is right now. As much as like I clown on Draymond for a lot of the excessive actions, 
we've seen that he does have hands that he, he does have that the film out for that as well so he's definitely an intimidating guy not afraid to flip the switch at any moment he, i think he definitely takes the the cake for kind of the combination of having something to back it up and having the craziness and willingness to let it fly so he's definitely an intimidating character but i gotta imagine there's at least somebody out there that, that could take on that challenge hey man all it takes is one one right yeah. to the chin and it's night night um and if he continues someone's going to do it and that's what i think the nba is saying right now like enough is enough we can't allow this to happen they have a Draymond green problem um, and that's not to sit here and say that's their only problem. The NBA has a ton of problems with Bridges and Charlotte. Of course, yeah. this Kitty situation down there in OKC. Who knows what's happening there? A lot of this stuff has to play out. But un- uh, not unfortunately, the 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 difference is this one happened on the playing field, on the court, right? right. Smacked them right upside the face. So you have to do something about it. So here we are. I'm okay with that. Let's continue. Second, we'll talk about- also from last night. The hashtag this league rolls on again here. This was intriguing because, look, you're talking about two teams that have developed a little bit of back and forth here. We know what took place in Vegas. Pacers got the best of the Bucks. Um, next thing you know, this game is taking place in Milwaukee. Milwaukee last night was six and a half point favorites. Giannis, who knew what the franchise record was for points, wanted to get to that number. 64 he finishes with. I think the Pacers took offense to him being in there. Damian Lillard had a great take on it. And if you haven't seen it, go press play on that because he was kind of in the middle. And he was like, I just want to see what everybody was saying. He goes, man, it's the pettiness of this league. We compete on a nightly basis. This is what you're going to get. If you missed it, it's something stupid, but I love it. Um, Giannis goes for 64. He wanted the game ball. There was a rookie on the Pacers that scored his first points in an NBA game. Not even points. He scored one point. Tashibwe, <laughs> who was it? It was Oscar Tashibwe. Oscar Tashibwe. Wow. Okay. Scored one point. One point. And they went and grabbed the game ball immediately after the game to give it to him. Now, I don't know if they knew that Giannis wanted the ball or not, but, you know, Giannis wants the ball. It's Milwaukee's floor. You would think he gets the right to the ball. It's not how it played out. The Pacers were very. Uh, possessive of that ball, let's put it that way. And there was a lot of great footage out there. Giannis raced back, looked like there was going to be some brawl or a brawl in the back rooms, but um, Cooler has prevailed. And I guess there's a backup ball, which we knew that. So somebody's got the real ball, somebody's got the backup ball. Nobody's happy. Yeah, I'm for starters, I hate my guy Oscar Tashibwe getting dragged into this. That Oscar Tashibwe genuinely one of the nicest human beings. That like you scroll on that guy's Instagram, it's nothing but mission trips and church youth group stuff. That like that's who he is as a guy, what he's into, what he does. So I hate him just being thrown into the fire for this mix. As far as the the game as a whole, I'm pretty pro pettiness all around in the situation that Giannis, you are, you're absolutely right to be able to to go for it, the pay, get get these lucrative numbers. He absolutely was stat padding. He went to the free throw line 32 times last 32 night. 32 times. Yeah. Didn't the Pacers shoot 32 free throws? Yeah, I believe that's the stat as well. So just craziness there. Um, I have no issue with him going for it. You should want to get these numbers. You should want to compete like that. I also have zero issue with the Pacers taking exception to that, especially when the game was over and him checking back in with 238 left or whatever, while all the Pacers starters on the bench, things like that. It started a little bit earlier in the game when there was a, a hard foul on Giannis that Bobby Portis took exception to. Thanis, Thanasis on the bench took exception to as well. I didn't think there was anything out of bounds on that foul specifically. It was kind of one where defender, I believe it was Andrew Nemhart on this one, got thrown up in the air. Uh, or Naismith, Aaron Naismith it was, kind of grabbed Giannis around his like neck area as he was coming down and tried to hold him up, but more or less tackled him. It looked worse than I thought it was, but kind of with the bubbling emotions, everyone was a little on edge. And then the after the game stuff, I, I think it's big time, like how Giannis handled it is loser stuff in my mind. He has fallen off the cliff as like the nice guy of the NBA, I feel. that There was a point in time where I think everyone looked at him as such a model, and he still have to absolutely respect his game and his work ethic. There's no doubt about it. But kind of the way that he goes about his business, the tossing ladders, screaming at guy, it just feels like Giannis has fallen off this kind of nice guy platform. And I have nothing wrong with competing, but a lot of the after-the-game stuff and the way that he kind of goes about it, kind of losing his temper in a way that he just shouldn't. I don't like out of Giannis. So I've been disappointed that he's kind of gone down this path. And I thought last night was another example of that. Yeah. Same old song and dance from Giannis, but he is far and away one of the best players in the league. We already know that 
champion, MVP, all that good stuff. And uh, in the running again for this year's MVP, 